It's amazing how you can speak right to my heart Without saying a word, you can light up the dark Try as I may, I can never explain what I hear when you don't see a thing The smile on your face lets me know that you need me There's a truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me The touch of your hand says you catch me wherever I fall When you see nothing at all All day long I can hear people talking about But when you hold me you drown out the crowd Try as they may They can never define What's been said Between your heart and mine Smile on your face Let me know that you need me There's a truth in your eyes Saying you'll never your hands as you catch me wherever I fall You see it best when you see nothing at all The truth in your eyes, see, and you'll never leave me. The touch of your hand says you catch me wherever I fall. See me when you see nothing at all. Truth in your eyes, the truth says it all. Nothing, nothing at all. See nothing. That's what I like, a bit of a classic pop anthem to, to set, us, set us on the right road for Hellbent Adore. tonight. Now, Steve, welcome. Yes. You are indeed our new bar person. I am. How does it feel? <laughs> you are not a substitute. I'm, I'm very exciting because just between you, me and everyone else out there, that Sean was a bit sc scungy <laughs> on the measures. <laughs> you want a couple of extra measures, I hear do around you? the traps that you're a bit of a free pourer. I Is that free pour. Like and I adore. Ooh, Steve. Tonight I'm making, making you a 
Multiple orgasm. Oh, so you're going to give me a multiple mm. orgasm. Oh, I like that. So you're having a multiple <laughs> orgasm tonight, Bunny. Fabulous. Oh, uh, oh you are free pouring. A basic shot <laughs> of vodka. <laughs> that was a little bit more than a basic, I would have thought. If that's basic, I'd like to see a delay. <laughs> that's how I work, though. You know. Well, I've got it all over my hands. And okay. so how does this work? So you, a, a shot of vodka? Yep. A, your basic shot of vodka, your basic shot of... Amaretto. Oh, you certainly are free pouring. This is a bit outrageous. I love it. What do you think? <laughs> Well, I mean, I love like it. filling them up and I sort of like think, oh, you've got to take into account spillage and oh, okay. you're right, you're all right. the rest. Because people are having a good night, they, they do tend to spill a little, don't they? Yeah. yeah okay. So you may as well have a good time. Okay. So we've had Let's it. have, in your basic cocktail shaker, filled with ice. Let's have a splash of the old tea, Maria. Oh, Ooh. yay! A, just a splash. A splash. We're going to be out of bloody. I'm loving this. I'm loving it. We do. We really do mean it. I like we it. I like it. splash. And what else? So that you just put all three in and you just That's shake it. it? Yeah. Now, now Sean told Stir us it. he told us about bruising. That's gin. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you that's can't bruise gin. that stuff. Okay, that's okay. heavy duty. Gin, um, when you whack it around, yeah. you sort of like you, you bruise it okay. and it gets that's really icky. Oh. A lot of things bruise when you whack them around. So that's though. it. You just pull the three together. And God, we need to get two segments out of it. What's going to happen now? Oh, you can show us how to garnish it in the next segment, can you? Oh, dear. <laughs> See, Spilly, she was Spilly. right. <laughs> Maybe I'll taste it in the next one. I know, time. give it a taste. Do that now. Give it a taste. I'm sorry. Ooh. Oh, fabulous. Give it a whirl. Careful. Yeah. How does it taste, Bunny? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, that mm. looks multiple. That is fantastic. <laughs> that was one, okay. And another. Oh, Two. that looks like a win. Uh, okay, enough is enough. Fantastic. We've got some wonderful guests over on the couch, Steve. Are you going to tell us how to put that together again? Because you did it so quickly, it was ridiculous. Oh, oh really? You're telling me too, yeah, too fast. It's all right. Oh, God, up. man. Well, you kept telling me, like, fast, keep it clean, fast, fast. keep it. It's all right. Like, oh, they've been around here always go off too <laughs> it's early. Always. No, it's yep. It's always. Yep. It's always a pleasure. Way. Thank you. Well, look, we'll see you at the end of the show. We're going to go over to the couch and have a chat to some fellow travellers on this earth. Please make them welcome our travelling guests. Hooray! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. As I descend onto the couch over here, Kay, you yes. have some lovely gentlemen with you on the couch. Lovely young men that have been travelling the globe. Well, we've, we've got some, some, some international tourists with the day because we, we thought we were a little bit obsessed with travel, this first episode, uh, well, the, tonight's episode anyway, and we thought we'd have a chat to these delightful men, Andy Muir from Manchester in England. That's right. That's correct. Hello. And Sam Hi. Strong <laughs> from San Francisco in the United States of America. Please make them welcome. <laughs> Now, Manchester has one of those really vibrant kind of gay scenes. Oh, yeah, but it's kind of like, you know, there's like lots of straights that come in now as well because they think it's like really cool, so it's like, you know. It's like gay friendly, but there's like, you know, like everyone's straight and snogging in the like windows. Oh, really? Oh, I mean, not scary. But it's still cool. It's okay. It's all going well. So why are you in our wonderful country, Andy? Are you just doing the travelling thing? Yeah, I just thought I wanted to travel around and come here, and I've got a ticket to go to the US and over to Canada as well, so I just thought, well, sorry, I'll start off in Australia and here I am. And are you here for several months or a few weeks? Uh, I think it's going to be a year. Really? <laughs> wow. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Which I'll see how it goes anyway. But well, I mean, that's great because that'll take, give our viewers a little bit of time to hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. They're very so. astute, <laughs> our viewers, aren't they, Luke? Like we all take, have calls in our well, office it's, like it's a little little frightening. and they leave. We don't give phone numbers anymore because no. it all gets a bit ugly. No. <laughs> I can get that's my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> no, Andy, don't be desperate. <laughs> Sam, you're here as well for a short time. You're travelling? Yes. Um, I just... I came on business. I uh, came for uh, photography with the Mardi Gras. Wow. And then I did uh, some photographs for theatre company, and I am loving Australia. I love it here. We're a pretty good country, aren't we? We, we don't say so ourselves. The reason we got you on was both of you have volunteered your time this week with mm. Bent TV, which is a wonderful thing, and we have lots of volunteers all the time coming in. We actually do tend to get a lot of travellers coming in, which is wonderful. And we thought it was a good opportunity, because we were talking travel this mm -hmm. week, to talk to you about what you found, um, you know, your favourite hot spots, travel spots in Australia. What did you find as in gay travel spots, if you like? Have you probably haven't come across many in your short time, but have there been any places that really stood out? <sighs> Sam? Gay. What is gay? <laughs> you know, um, I, know. Oh. I love Melbourne. It's mm -hmm. really great. Sydney was fun. I loved Nimbin, but that isn't gay. Nimbin? And it's for lots of other reasons. <laughs> um, Byron Bay is fabulous. Yeah. But none of them were really out and out Gay. Into gay, okay. you know, but gays everywhere. You just right. look around and you say, "Honey, I'm there," <laughs> you know. 
Well, it's yes. good that you can identify with things around you at any given moment. Always. Do you think we're just a little bit more conservative in this country with, with the expression of our sexuality? Do you think that we kind of, it's a, more difficult to pick us? I don't know. But I mean, you see me walking down the street. Right, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, no. No. You wouldn't think I so. I wouldn't think, think I'm a lovely Christian woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're Sunday. I think I think, yeah, you are. You too. And the sacrificial wine. <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne, Andy. I love it. Well, I haven't been out in Melbourne. I've been here five weeks. I haven't been anywhere apart from really? Melbourne. Yeah, but um, Ben TV. Ben TV. Yeah, that's it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's as good as it gets. <laughs> believe it. Can you imagine, Luke? Wouldn't that be a warped impression you had of the city? <laughs> <laughs> the only place you ended up is at Ben TV. <laughs> no, I can say the best place I've been so far, without a doubt, is Puffing Billy. You've got to go on that. <laughs> really? No. I love the, the way you say Puffing Billy comes out as Puffing Billy. <laughs> <laughs> you think the whole place was full of poofs? What else? What else have you been in Melbourne? Oh no, I don't. So, look, but Puffing Billy was a highlight. No, I haven't. I haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, my God, Andy, no, get out! I, I, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to go there. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've been to, I've been to a few bars on commercial roads and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, because I can't work legally, I'm going to have to try and sell my wares on commercial roads. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you from an arts background or something? Or? Um, yeah, I've done some writing and stuff since I've been here as well. So I'm seeing how that goes. But um, yeah, I mean, Wonderful. I've kind of tossed well, it around. The that are the I know. I know. The oh. traveling thing. The traveling. We're getting the wind up, so we've got to go to a break. But thank you for spending some time. Will you stick thank around you. for the rest of the show? And yeah. Chat on our bent and bothered panel. <laughs> panel. We can always give some advice to those so poor, lonely viewers. We'll see you right after the break. Please stick around for more Hell Bent. Hooray! <laughs> liaison officer in the Victoria Police Force now. It's fantastic. Are you the first? I am the first and yeah. the only at this stage. Wow. Um, but hopefully as uh, we develop a need for the program it'll be expanded upon. Because I mean you're, you've got a huge brief if you like haven't you? I mean you've got a lot of stuff I've been reading articles by you in mag magazines and, and all sorts of places and so you've got a, a big ask really to try and cover everything that yeah. The Melbourne gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender community sort of needs. <laughs> it's, it's a mouthful, isn't it? It is. A ne bit. Needs to um to to be covered in, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, it's um. There's a huge amount to be done with the, with the actual position mm. um, and it involves everything from educating the department and also educating the community that my role is here and the position is here and the Victoria Police is encouraging members of the gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgender community. It sounds like a sandwich. It doesn't. It's a GLBT special. <laughs> yes. um, so, you know, educating the community as well as to what the police can do for you. And I guess, you know, one of the main aims of the role is to prevent violence occurring against the gay and lesbian, bisexual and transgendered community. Absolutely. Um, and to stop that violence that, that does occur in yeah. the community. And in that respect, I'd encourage any member of the community that is a victim of a crime to report the matter to me if they don't feel comfortable reporting it to their own police station. And how, how if, I mean, uh, this is, you know, sort of doing a bit of a plug in an ad before we probably <laughs> needed to, but, but how would people get in contact with you if they were looking to... Okay, there's um, probably a couple of ways of being able to contact me. One is via the uh, office phone number, which is 9247-6944, and the other way would be via the office mobile, which is 0414 one eight one four zero three. And I guess the third way would be to actually come into the Victoria Police Centre in Flinders Street. It's going to say, do you have your own web page? <laughs> Not <laughs> sort yet. Sort of got everything but a pager at this stage, haven't you? That's, I mean, you, and as I said before, you do a whole range of, of things for our community. Yes. I mean, and it's not just sort of, I mean, I guess hate crimes from outside of the community. I mean, you're covering a whole range of things within um, our own community regarding domestic violence in, exactly. in gay and lesbian relationships, that type of thing. Exactly. I recently wrote an article for uh, the Lesbiana magazine in regards to domestic violence and so far I'm finding that um, a lot of my calls from individual members of the community has actually been in regards to gay and lesbian domestic violence and I think it's something that's not recognised within the general community no. and it's even hidden more within the uh, gay and lesbian community unfortunately so there are ways that we can deal with that and we can deal with it together. Yeah absolutely. Kay have you met Melinda before? Yes we you have. We actually met at Joy Melbourne a few. We did. And I think I renamed you on air. You did. <laughs> what happened to Melissa or something? <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing my blonde wig at the time. <laughs> what I think is fabulous Luke is you've actually got a little rainbow um, yeah. badge underneath your name. 
Do you get people sort of looking at the name and then seeing the rainbow and just sort of doing a double take and thinking, am I seeing it right? Yes, most definitely. And it, it, I was actually wearing it above the name tag, but I got sick of people asking me, what award is that for? <laughs> <laughs> and Missing it, actually. <laughs> Um, and the other problem was the Channel 7 logo. Ah, oh, of course. Oh, right. So everyone thinks you work for Channel 7. Yes. Right. So you're a blue heelers cop. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, Channel 7's gone gay. I know, I know. Isn't it scary? <laughs> Melinda, would you stick around with us to the I'd end of the show to. and be a part I'd of our to. panel on Bent and Bothered later on? Melinda Edwards, Senior Constable Melinda Edwards, who's the lesbian and gay police liaison officer for the Victoria Police, please thank her for us and we'll see you right after this great <laughs> stick around. Thank you. Go on, stop. We, we do get the best studio audiences, I think, on Hellbend. Thank you for being such a warm and receptive lot. I hope you're enjoying the show equally as much back at home. This evening, we've got some wonderful guests uh, to talk to you. The, these people are from the Melbourne Rainbow Band, and we'd like you to make welcome Hannah Glynn, who is the president of the Melbourne Rainbow Band, and Tony Ray. Please make the welcome. <laughs> It's nice to see our guests getting comfortable. Now, to see, Steve, our barman, is looking after everyone this episode, isn't he? Yeah, he yeah, certainly everyone's is. Everyone's got a drink. Cheers to <laughs> <and> you. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Now, guys, we've got you here because you've got so many things that have been happening and you've got so many things that are coming up. Hannah, you're the president and you also play trumpet. I do. And I do. Tony, you're not, not presidential, I would imagine. Are you on the committee or anything? I am on the committee. You are on the committee. Yes. Oh, that's, yes. that's all right. So you're a committee member and you play the flute. I do. Now, yes. the Melbourne Rainbow Band is indeed a band, not an orchestra. It's a concert such. band, so there's no string players. It's just woodwind and percussion. Mm. And, and you've brass. Done, you've done some amazing things. I mean, you don't just play scout halls. You've, you've been all around the world, haven't <laughs> well, you? Well, no, that is a personal favourite of ours, scout halls. <laughs> but no, we do get around. We do marching, uh, as in with Mardi Gras and Pride March, as well as, um, you know, our own huge concerts and paying for, like, fantasy ball and things like that. It's fantastic. We get around. You, I mean, because you sort of see the Melbourne Rainbow Band's name at a lot of places these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, from what started as a fairly, I would imagine, it's merely sort of like a hobby type. Well, no, well, it started five years ago with six people at first wow. rehearsal and uh, we just had that momentum from the start and within a couple of months, six months or so, we were up to a full-size band. Have you got a CD yeah. out? We do. Oh, <laughs> I love We've that. had about two years now and we've still got box full size. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, if you want a copy of the Melbourne Rainbow Band CD, give them a call. We'll give you a number later. Now, you've also got some amazing things coming up. You've got a wonderful concert coming up in June. Tony, where's that happening? We, we do. We, on the 4th of June... We have a concert coming up um, in the National Theatre in St Kilda. Fantastic. With some fantastic guest artists. We've got Rhonda Birchmore. Ah, wonderful. Mm. The leggy Rhonda Birchmore. The leggy Rhonda Birchmore. You don't hear a name that often without <laughs> the leggy proceeding, do you? Who and else? Donald Kant. Oh, wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful yes. singer. Yeah. You've got some pretty high class acts performing with the Melbourne Rainbow. Well, you know, high class guys with high class. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. Give them a round of applause. Because I remember a few years back you did a gig with Judy Kennelly, didn't oh, you? Oh, she's at the, amazing. Oh, well, that was fabulous. We've actually got that on tape somewhere. We should drag it out. Oh, yeah. 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 That's fantastic. Yeah. And so, look, you've got... This is what I'm very excited about. A bit interested in the name. Our traveller, Sam Strong, who was our guest earlier from America. You, you are a member of the Lesbian and Gay Bands of America. There you are, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, so, is the Melbourne Rainbow Band sort of token Americans? How does that work? Oh, well... It, it was because uh, it came about because we'd organised a tour mm -hmm. to California right. that was in um, September of '97. Right. And um, we went over for the Lesbian and Gay Bands Conference yeah. in Los Angeles. Fantastic. And as part of that conference, um, we were made members. Amazing. Yeah. Of now, the association. Yeah. You were saying earlier you were trying to get the name of the, organi the association. Right. Well, we're, we're the, there's only two groups outside of North America, out of America, one in North America and ourselves. There are a few bands in Europe, but 
they're not regular and mm -hmm. they're only for like the pride marches, local pride marches. But in America, every city has a gay and lesbian concert band and it's a huge movement. And to be a part of that when we're in Australia, we're so isolated as a band. Um, it was really fantastic. So we feel yeah. part of it. Again, it changed in 2002 to Lesbian and Gay Bands of the World. Good on I hope to, you know, in now that's places. also ties in, you've, you're hosting a, the conference for mm. these bands in Melbourne, is that right? Yeah. Well, we certainly hope to. We're, right. That's, that's in the making. Yeah, we've that's put in the, the making at the moment. America, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I've always thought that music is a wonderfully unifying element in I agree, <laughs> Kay. <laughs> Ms. Kay Fry, ladies and gentlemen. Right there, yeah. Don't you find, because there's so many disparate elements in our many complex communities, and I think it's lovely when you've got something that brings everybody mm. together. Mm. Personalities vary yeah. hugely yeah. and everyone comes from different backgrounds. I guess you've got no time for bitching when you're trying to get, make well, a musical I, note. I don't know. You, <laughs> really. right. you do works? pretty well. No. But we find that the social aspect yeah. of the Melbourne Rainbow Band is to many of us is just as important as the musical yeah, aspect. Sure. Yeah. I truly well, realise, and I do mean that sincerely, that I think music's wonderful. Mm. Yes. I mean, they create some fabulous music. Mm. Well, I mean, I've heard you many times. Yeah. It's an extraordinary yeah. sound. Well, June's yeah. going to be our biggest concert yet. It's really... June is busting June, out all over, really. Oh. Yes. <laughs> It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. So, and you've, so you've got Rhonda Birchmore, Donald Cant, is at the National Theatre in St Kilda on the 4th of June. Is that a Saturday evening? Sunday evening. Sunday yeah. night. Oh, there you are. Good Sunday evening. evening. So you can all take the Monday off. Yes, and it's $20 for adults and 15 for concessions, so very affordable. Oh, a that's bargain. a cheap price. Mm. Such an amazing and night's entertainment. Yep. How do, you've got a bookings number here, 9534 -0221. That's 95340221 if you want to make a booking for the Melbourne Rainbow Band's Hooked on Classics concert <laughs> at the National Theatre in St Kilda. Thank you for joining us, Hannah and Tony. Thank well, thank you, you for Maybe you'll stick around at the end and solve somebody's problems on being oh, too bothered. Would you do that with us? It'd be fantastic. Yes. Be wonderful. And best of luck in everything. And if people do want to become members of the band, they can always contact that number as well. Give us a call. Well, no, that's actually for the National Theatre. Oh, sorry. That's the National Theatre. No, if you give our musical director a call on 9772. 9079. 9772-9079. And that's Richard O'Toole. Yes. He's the musical director. Thank you again. Thank you. We'll chat to you at the end of the show. But Thanks. now it's time to head over to Bunny's Beauty Bits. <laughs> Make her welcome. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh. Luke, I'm actually sharing my bits today. Now, I've heard this, Bunny. I didn't want to introduce the segment just, just so, so quickly and with, without, without a bit of an, a fanfare. We have got a new segment and we've got a new member of our crew. See, Sean departs with somebody else travels on in. It's the travel theme, this it show, isn't it? It certainly is. We would like to make welcome Brett Chant, travel agent to the stars. Make him welcome. <laughs> Thank you. He is your personal travel agent because you travel all over the world, don't oh, you, Bunny? Frequently. Japan's just just a drop in the ocean, really, isn't it? Bunny's actually one of V Line's top customers, actually. <laughs> She's often zipping around the country of Maui one day, one thaggy the next. <laughs> Brett, what are you talking to us about with our travel segment? Basically, now? we're looking at a travel travel spot. Oh. Basically, trying to iron out the creases of everyone's travel destination choices. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, we're all travelling more, we're all getting to see more destinations, and basically, uh, we've been deluged. The show's oh. been deluged with inquiries about is it safe to travel to different destinations? Isn't that extra? All without even announcing the new segment we've and got us already. And you're probably wondering the garb. It's um, pretty amazing what you can do for under $5 on <laughs> <in> Victoria Street. <laughs> Very impressed with our costumery. All right, now, so go yeah, on with the letters. Right, please. basically, I'll share that with the group here. Dear Brett, I am a 19 year old leggy blonde, new in town, and have just read Arthur Golden's book, Memoirs of a Geisha. Terrific ah, read. Good read, indeed. I'm writing in to find out how actually I can become a geisha. Oh. I've also read Betty Mahmoodie's Not Without My Daughter. Oh, I think that's a bit of a red herring. <laughs> So, is it Tokyo a go-go or Tokyo a no-go? Oh. Hmm. What do you think, Brett? Where does Look, this for a 19-year-old uh, leggy blonde, I probably think Melbourne's probably a place to make money in, gold mm -hmm. fingers, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I think Japan's a great destination, but I think you've got to be very careful. Um, anyone under 26 is eligible for a, a work visa. In fact, you can get a full-time work visa up until the age of 31. Oh, mm -hmm. to Japan? To Japan. It's so amazing. it's it's yeah, it's something that a lot of people should consider doing a work visa to Japan. Of course, geishering is probably a little more out of the uh, ordinary. <laughs> out of the ordinary. I couldn't see many Aussie girls getting down there and getting no, the geisha. No, Bunny. What about you? Do you think that you would perhaps um, 
have some Geisha. advice to the leggy blonde? Well, look, what I think is that beauty is very important mm -hmm. any time. When you're travelling, you quite often don't have all your bits and pieces around you. What I'm going to do mm -hmm. is um, maybe help our 19-year-old leggy blonde a little bit with the problem they might have. And I think skin is very important if you want to be a geisha. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a little bit of a mud mask. Oh, Ooh, I love that. Okay. Now, mud is something you can find in all countries. So we have no problem getting and that. And mud's pretty big in Japan. It is, it? and it's quite... Volcanic ash at the moment. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it's actually quite sandy there, which is great, because as we know, we like to exfoliate. Absolutely. Now, tofu, something that... Bunny, do you think we should sift through any of this, or is it OK, that, that mm. amount of rock? No, no I think you're just mm. looking for gold, darling, and there's going to be none in there. OK, so we mm. give that a nice it's bit of a crunchy, stir. Crunchy, isn't it? Good and crunchy. Now, something else that you can get in any country is a good bit of lard. Oh, God. Lard. Oh, I think that's gone off. Lard, that's enough from you, Brett. It's your first week. Don't make it your last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, now we give that a bit of a stir up. And something that you can find in any country is Coca-Cola. Oh, a cola product, because we don't want to go endorsing any one. That's right, That's a exactly cola right. product. Now, the great thing about any cola product is it will just eat the shit out of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> so we mix that together. And look, isn't that looking gorgeous? And it's as fantastic. you know, what I like to do is oh. always give a spray of oh. an impulse-like impulse product, not impulse. That is fabulous. Okay. Yeah, sorry, yes. So what we do, we stir An that up. An impulse equivalent. Yeah. I can't believe it's not impulse. <laughs> you can't. And then what we do is we actually just slap that on. It's a fantastic consistency. Brent, what do you think? Do you think it's got potential? Oh, look, I tell you, um, it's, it's rainy, it's chunky. It's, it's lovely. It's a little it? oatmeal-y. I, I think there's a it's, spatial scrub in there too. It's I, got a good smell though, and that's always important. Look, I think it's a three-step program. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a beauty product. This is a way of life. I guarantee you, you will have clear skin, geisha, it will be Tokyo Go Go. So, do you think that with Tokyo Go Go, do you think there's a way of perhaps sending these types of products to our letter writers for the segment each week, finding a way to give them mm -hmm. the, the best possible okay. way to get over to Japan, for All example? All right, well, they can actually email me on bunnymccoy at hotmail.com. Okay. That's bunny with an IE, McCoy with a K. <laughs> okay, so you remember that? And you can get all the beauty tips from yes, the Yes, because I don't think we'll send that through the No, no. <laughs> We'll leave it to Exa. You've both been wonderful. Thank you for joining us, Brett. Will you stick around to the end of the show? Oh, why not? And we'll see you next week, of course. Shall do. Lovely to have you on board. Please make them a big, big... Make them? No, no, thank them. That was Bunny McCoy and Brett Chad. Thank you. See you after the break. for a minute. Okay, a good shot of vodka. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Fantastic. <laughs> That's about everything, really, isn't it, buddy? It is. So, so now, what that will do, it will give you definition, define curl. Right. And um, if you want to straighten it, I'm sorry, you're in, on the wrong show, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> buddy, thank you again for another terrific buddy. Let's give her a hand. Bunny down under. We'll be back right after this break and we'll be having more exciting guests on Hell Ben!
Hello, Hello. Hello.